side at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Good to see you, Michael. This one is such a strange one, isn't it? Such a strange situation to be in. What's the mood like there? Postacoglu says we can't judge fans based on social media. You cover Tottenham a lot, don't you? So what are the fans saying? Side at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Good to see you, Michael. This one is such a strange one, isn't it? Such a strange situation to be in. What's the mood like there? Postacoglu says we can't judge fans based on social media. You cover Tottenham a lot, don't you? So what are the fans saying? Side at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Good to see you, Michael. This one is such a strange one, isn't it? Such a strange situation to be in. What's the mood like there? Postacoglu says we can't judge fans based on social media. You cover Tottenham a lot, don't you? So what are the fans saying? Patrick would keep Klopp. Right, uh, let's get more now ahead of tonight's huge game in the Premier League title. Arsenal fans hoping Tottenham do them a favour, yes, while Spurs fans hoping they don't hand the Premier League to their great rivals by getting a result against Manchester City. Our reporter, Michael Bridge, is pitch side with that man there, Gary Neville. Hello. Yeah, so tonight's game will be a huge test for both sets of fans in North London, you'd think. A Tottenham win will keep them in the hunt for Champions League qualification. But as we know, it would also hand Arsenal the advantage in the Premier League title race. So, are Spurs fans hoping their team lose? And will Arsenal fans be cheering on their North London rivals? Is on facing new turn. Majority shareholder Fahad Mashiri has extended his agreement with 777 partners until the end of the month. But time is running out for them to get their takeover deal done. Premier League Chief Executive Richard Masters says Mashiri still wants to sell 77 partners, but after months of delays and struggles to meet, uh, meet the league's to meet the league's rules, some Everton supporters have called on Mashiri to pull the plastic for the undisputed heavyweight title. Let's head to Riyadh now, Saudi Arabia, where Ben Ransom is waiting to speak to us. Good to see you again, Ben. What can we expect from this evening? Called England's World Cup captain Millie Bright for the first time since October. Bright had been sidelined with a knee injury, but makes her return to the squad for back-to-back -back games against all but confirm European qualification for next season with a win at Manchester United tomorrow night. But they might have to go there without a striker. Callum Wilson was unavailable at the weekend, while Alexander Isak is ill. Both will be a say of change at Hibernian. Marky Mackay has been confirmed as their new sporting director. He's going to oversee their entire football operation, company, encompassing all departments from recruitment through to the academy. It comes just hours after the club sacked Nick Montgomery, who was in charge for just eight months at Easter Road. Montgomery leaves after Sunday's 4-0 defeat to Aberdeen. It means Hibs are looking for their sixth. Maradacanu hasn't received a wild card for the French Open, which begins on May the 26th. The Britain's currently four spots outside of the main draw. So if there are not four withdrawals in the coming days, she'll have to fight for her spots in the qualifiers next week. Now she's also withdrawn from the Strasbourg Open starting on Sunday ahead of Roland Garros. As she feels cheated out of her world bantamweight title and wants a rematch. In bizarre scenes this weekend, Hughes was declared the winner of her title defence against Chireka Johnson in Perth, Australia, before the referee overturned the original announcements.